muscles of the hand now. So here we've got an anterior view of a, of a right hand. Uh, if we start on the thumb side, so on the lateral side, we can see here that we have an abductor pollicis brevis. So that's going to abduct the thumb, and it's the shorter one of the two that does that, so it's abductor pollicis brevis. And medial to that, closer to the middle of the hand, we can see the flexor pollicis brevis. So we've got abductor on the outside and then flexor towards the inside. If we remove the abductor, so we just take that one out, deep to the abductor and the flexor, we have the opponent's pollicis. No need for a brevis this time because there isn't a long one, so that's just opponent's pollicis. Now if we move medial from those three, and those three together are called the thenar muscles, if we move medially from them, you can see this one here, which is adductor pollicis. So there's an adductor in here as well. It's going to bring the thumb back to the midline, or towards the midline. So that's adductor pollicis. You can see it here between the first and second metacarpals there. And just medial to that, you can see a, a little thin worm-like muscle attaching to the second digit here, and it goes, it goes around to attach posteriorly. So that's the first lumbricle. And there should be four of them, so there'll be another one here attaching to digit three, another one here to digit four, another one here attaching to digit five. Now on specimens, the first one will generally be larger and easier to spot than any of the others. But there are, th but there should still be four there. But the first one usually easiest to find. So one, two, three, four lumbricals there. Now remember, they're on the palmar surface of the hand. They'll be just lateral to these long flexor tendons. So we're looking at the tendon of flexor digitorum superficialis here. The lumbrical should be just lateral to that. Now then, if we come over to the medial side of the hand, just like we did on the lateral side, we can find. Uh, a flexor, digiti minimi brevis here, towards the middle of the hand, and then an abductor towards the outside. And this time it's the medial side of the hand, but it's towards the outside. So this is abductor, digiti minimi, and then flexor, digiti minimi. Now just on the lateral side of this nerve branch here, there is a dividing line here on the model that you can see if you, if you close up to it. Um, that separates the abductor from the flexor. But what you can usually see on this side of the hand, and let's move in and have a closer look. Firstly, there's that dividing line between the abductor and the flexor. But if you look closely here, we can see another muscle underneath them. That's the opponent's digiti minimi. And usually, the opponent's digiti minimi is visible here without removing the flexor and the abductor, but if we, just in case we wanted to, to see the entire opponent's muscle, here it is here. But usually you can spot this lateral part of it without removing those other muscles. Now what that means is if we look at the, the seven larger muscles that we've got here, there is a saying that might help you, and it goes all for one and one for all. And what it means is all is for the abductor, pollicis brevis, four is for the flexor, and one is for the opponents, which is deep to them. So it goes all for one, and is the adductor pollicis, one, opponents, digiti minimi, four, again, is flexor, digiti minimi brevis, and then all, um, all is the abductor, digiti minimi. So all for one, and one for all is how that saying goes. Now, of course, that doesn't help you forget it, but often those things will help you to be able to get it in order if you can. So that's it for what you need to know for now for the muscles of the hand.